Hi and welcome back. In this lesson, I will teach you the four secrets to speak English with perfect pronunciation. These are the same techniques that I have used to improve my own pronunciation and I have seen them work for many of my students as well. So what are these four secrets? They are sound, stress, tone and rhythm. I will explain to you what these are and how you can master all of them to sound more like a native speaker. So number one is sound. When we write a word in English, we write it using letters. Take this word for example, we write it with six letters. In the same way, when we pronounce a word, we do it using sounds. This word is pronounced school. You see that the written form has six letters, S-C-H-O-O-L, but the spoken form has four sounds, S, K, U, and U. Every word in English has both consonant sounds, like G, L, T, S, etc., and vowel sounds, like A, A, E, U, and so on. Here's another example, women. This word is written with five letters and it's spoken with five sounds, but notice that both the O and the E are pronounced as short I sounds, women. This is because in English, the spelling and pronunciation of a word can be very different. And for this reason, whenever you say a word, you need to get the sounds right. If you try to simply read the spelling, you might go wrong. So you must use a dictionary to learn the correct pronunciation of words. I suggest that you use an online dictionary like Cambridge, Oxford, or Merriam-Webster because that way, when you search for a word, you can see the pronunciation in phonetic symbols and you can also click a button to hear the correct pronunciation. So here's an action point for you. Every day, learn the pronunciation of at least five words. Pick words that you're not sure how to pronounce and look them up in an online dictionary. Play the audio on the website or app and practice along with it. For each word, practice saying it correctly at least five times. This is my five by five method. Practice the correct pronunciation of five words five times every day. Secret number two is stress. What does it mean to stress something? Well, it means to give it emphasis or importance. When we do this in pronunciation, it's called word stress or syllable stress. Take the word school. You know that there are four sounds, but we don't say school. We say all the sounds together as one group, school. This grouping of sounds is called a syllable. In the word women, there are two syllables because there are two groups of sounds, wim and im. If a word has two or more syllables, one syllable will always be stressed. That is, it will be given more importance than the others. In this word, notice that we stress the first syllable, women. The apostrophe, the little mark before wim, indicates this. Here's another word, correct. There are again two syllables, k and rect, but in this word, we stress the second syllable, rect, so correct. Notice how that stressed syllable is said with a slightly louder volume, and it also sounds longer, correct. In this next word, how many syllables are there? There are three, b, nan, a. Which is stressed? The second, banana. Here's one final example, three syllables again, after noon, this time the third syllable is stressed, so afternoon, like when we say good afternoon. It is very important to stress words correctly because otherwise your pronunciation will sound awkward and strange. But if you can do this well, then it will show your listeners that you have good English pronunciation. Now, generally, it's difficult for us to guess which syllable in a word is stressed, but there's good news. When you look up a word in a dictionary, you will find that the stress syllable is marked. Some dictionaries will show this as an apostrophe. 
Others will capitalize the stressed syllable. So when you learn the pronunciation of a word, you should learn how to say the sounds correctly, but you should also learn which syllable to stress. Number three is tone. Another name for this is intonation. This means the way our voices go up and down when we speak. So it refers to the changes in the pitch of our voice. Intonation exists in all the languages of the world, but different languages use different tones. So this means that when you speak English, you might be using the intonation of your language. But to sound natural, you need to learn the tones of English. Thankfully, English has just two major tones. These are called a rising tone and a falling tone. Have a look at this example. I work as a teacher. This is a falling tone because notice how my voice goes down in pitch at the end. I work as a teacher. Here's another example. Do you like ice cream? This sentence has a rising tone because my voice goes up at the end. Do you like ice cream? And this one, what's your favorite color, has a falling tone. What's your favorite color? These three sentences show us the three main rules for intonation in English. Statements or affirmative sentences are usually said with a falling tone. Yes or no questions are said with a rising tone and questions that ask for information with question words like who, what, when, where, why, and how normally have a falling tone. This is important because if you use the wrong tone, your listener can misunderstand your meaning or they can be confused. But an even bigger problem is that wrong intonation can show bad attitude. Take this sentence for example. What is the purpose of it? Well, imagine that I'm saying this to my boss because I want a day's holiday from work tomorrow. So I'm asking for permission. This type of sentence should be said with a falling tone to show politeness. But let me do the opposite. Let me say it with a rising tone. Would it be okay if I took the day off tomorrow? How does that sound? It sounds like I'm rude or maybe even disrespectful. But notice how it sounds when I use the correct falling tone. Would it be okay if I took the day off tomorrow? Isn't that more polite? And here's one last example. You see, this is an offer. Maybe you're a guest at my home and I'm offering you coffee. This should be said with a rising tone. But here's the opposite, a falling tone. Do you want some coffee? Sounds terrible, right? It sounds like I'm uninterested, bored, like I don't want you as my guest. Here's the same sentence with my voice going up. Do you want some coffee? Much better. I'm sure that you see the importance of tone now. A great way to improve your own intonation is to practice with English language movies and TV shows. As you listen to the dialogue, notice the tones the speakers are using. Practice along with them. It will be very helpful to have subtitles when you do this because you can find out where the tone goes up or down. If you're watching on your computer or your smartphone, you can even rewind and practice saying the same sentences again and again until you get the tone right. And finally, number four is the most important aspect of pronunciation, rhythm. Rhythm relates to music. And we're talking about it here because every language has a kind of musical flow when native speakers speak it. This is called the rhythm of the language. English, of course, has its own rhythm. And if you want great pronunciation, you need to understand and copy this rhythm. Take this sentence for example. He lives with his wife Anna from in the village. Did that sound right? You could tell that there was something wrong with it. Maybe I sounded like a robot. That was because my rhythm was completely wrong. So what is the right way to say the sentence? Here it is. He lives with his wife on a farm in the village. That sounded correct because I gave importance to some words in the sentence. Notice that lives, wife, farm, and village stand out. If I take away these words, 
the sentence has no meaning. That's because these words have all the meaning or content in the sentence, and they're called content words. They're usually nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, and they are emphasized, that is, stressed in a sentence. All the other words are grammar words, that is, they just give grammatical information, pronouns, prepositions, and conjunctions. We don't stress these words. Instead, we say them quickly and softly. He, with his, on a, in the. He lives with his wife on a farm in the village. When you stress the content words and unstress the grammar words, you produce the correct rhythm of English. To speak with proper rhythm, there are three techniques you can use. The first is to use weak forms of grammar words. For example, this word is can. This pronunciation is called the strong form. But when we say it in a sentence, we say can. That's the weak form. And becomes un, for becomes fur. Weak forms help us to say grammar words quickly and easily. Here's a sentence. How would you say it? Here it is. We can meet tomorrow and discuss arrangements for the conference. We can meet. Tomorrow and discuss. Arrangements for the conference. We can meet tomorrow and discuss arrangements for the conference. The second technique is to use contractions. We do this a lot with pronouns. Instead of saying I am, we just say I'm. And instead of she is, we say she's. Here's a sentence. I'm trying to call her, but she's not answering her phone. I'm trying to call her, but she's not answering her phone. The third technique is combinations. That is to crush and combine grammar words together. For example, the phrase going to often becomes going to or even gonna in informal speech. I'm sure you've also heard want to or wanna and have to. The phrases should have, could have, and would have become should have, could have, and would have, or even shoulda, coulda, and woulda. For example, I'm going to visit my parents tomorrow, or I'm gonna visit my parents tomorrow. Do you want to have lunch with me? Notice I said, do you want to? If I had studied more, I would have passed the exam. We can contract I had to I'd and would have to woulda. If I'd studied more, I would have passed the exam. There are many more weak forms, contractions, and combinations. You should study and practice them in your own time. The biggest pronunciation mistake that learners of English make is to stress all the words in a sentence equally. This is wrong. You should learn to stress only the content words and unstress the grammar words. Rhythm is also sometimes called sentence stress for this reason. You should work on your rhythm when you watch English language movies and TV shows. A great technique is to stop a scene and look at the subtitles. Before you hear the dialogue, think about which are the content words that will be stressed. Try to say it on your own with the right rhythm. Then play the scene and see if you got the rhythm correct. Watch for the three techniques, weak forms, contractions, and combinations. Then practice speaking along with the actors. This will give you the ability to both identify the rhythm of English and to be able to use it correctly. All right, those are the four secrets to perfect English pronunciation, sound, stress, tone, and rhythm. Remember to practice regularly with the exercises I shared with you in this video. And if you liked this lesson, give it a thumbs up by hitting the like button. Also subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button to get my latest lessons right here on YouTube. Happy learning, and I will see you in another lesson soon.